Hello and welcome back to Gage Hill Crafts. I'm Sarah Scully with a wrap-up of the Vermont Sheep and Wool Festival and joining me today is a very special guest. Mom's here. Hi mom. Hi Sarah. <laughs> mom does have a name. This is Nancy Hart and uh, she's the reason I, I got into fiber arts in the first place. She taught me to knit and then got me involved in spinning. So I'm very happy to have her on the show today. Thanks for coming. You're welcome. Glad to be here. Yay. Um, so yeah, as I mentioned, we're going to wrap up our uh, Vermont Sheep and Wool Festival experience. We have uh, a lot of fun things to talk about today. Um, I guess the first thing would be the spinning class that we took with Jillian Moreno. Um, she wrote the book Yarn a Texture, which we both have a copy of and have um, used a lot in our spinning practice. You've got something here with us, Mom, that uh, you sort of took directly from that book. Yes. I took this to the class to show the other participants that if you follow the directions in Jillian's book, you can actually get wonderful results. And I have to say, the way she writes and also the way she teaches her class is very simple, very clear, and very non-technical. Mm -hmm. So she doesn't hit you with a lot of jargon or numbers or whatever. Yeah. So this cowl was made by dividing a multicolored bat from a little company called Into the World. And I wanted to preserve the colors mm -hmm. because sometimes when you spin something that's this multicolored, if you jumble all the colors together, you just get something muddy and not very attractive. Right. So I followed her instructions and this was the result, and mm -hmm. I, I was very pleased with it when we yeah. got finished. I think so. you did an excellent job. You can really see distinctive bands of color. You've got a purple, purpley blue, blue, blue yellow, and yellowy orange. Very distinctive, which, which is hard to do. But yeah, Jillian has some great uh, tips in that book. Again, we'll link to that in the show notes um, on treating different dyed preparations of fiber in different ways to get different kinds of effects. But it's you know, her whole thing is she wants you to be in the driver's seat and make a conscious decision. How am I going to treat this fiber and what result am I aiming for? And I thought her class was really good. It was pretty loose structured, um, but she gave us a lot of tips as we were going through the class and let people ask questions. And um, she kind of went through her book. The particular class we were taking was also called Yarn, yarn Texture. Um, so you start with different breeds of fiber and then different spinning techniques for the singles and different plying techniques. Um, what were some of the highlights of the class for you? Did you like? I liked a lot of her tips and tricks. Mm -hmm. I find that regardless of how much experience you have, there's really no substitute for taking class from a live instructor because everybody has their own little bag of Mm -hmm. tips that, that they can give you, some of which are extremely useful. So I really like that part of the class. Yeah, I did too. And I like that she encouraged you to kind of, even if you'd given up on some kind of technique, um, like spinning with roving, for example, or making really thin yarn or really thick yarn, you know, she wasn't real dictatorial in her class, but she would say, just do it for five minutes. I think about it as like a parent trying to get their kid, just eat two bites of that vegetable you don't right. like, you know, <laughs> just try it again while I'm here and I can help you. Um, this is my card of samples that I made in class. I don't know if you guys can see all the, the different textures here, um, but here's some roving. Here's some different, uh, you can see the different breeds we were using. Merino, Wensleydale. All different kinds. This one was a fun surprise for me. This is the Merino Silk Blend, and I thought this would be really like so slippery that it would be unpleasant to spin with, but I actually enjoyed that, so that was a nice surprise. Um, and then at the end of the class, we did this, um, which is holding two colors of, you know, of raw fiber in your hands and spinning with them at the same time, and that was... That was a little challenge. That was cool. I had never even heard of doing this before, so um, I was really excited. My friend Anne, who stayed with us for the festival, gave me this whole big bag of roving, and I'm really looking forward to spinning with some of this. Oh, look at this. Wow. 
that's got crazy colors in it. Now, Jillian is very, very much into working with color. Yep. And what to do with all those beautiful dyed braids you buy or mm -hmm. mats you may buy. Yep. Um, a, a lot of people are really nonplussed by how to approach those. And nobody wants to spend white top their whole spinning career. Right. So. The color. She gave us... Um, choices of which colors to use in class, which was nice. She just took heaps of fiber and dumped it out in the middle of the floor and said, come pick what you want. So for example, she would give you like these two and then you would spin them together um, just in the raw fiber and to get, you know, some really interesting combination that you might not have thought of before. Um, that was cool. Um, and yeah, and I think using up those like bits and bobs, like you said, a lot of people buy these four ounce braids and it's like buying a single skein of yarn for knitters, you know, it's like, okay, well, what am I going to do with just this? But if you combine that with a neutral or combine it with another set of colors, you can get some really interesting effects. Right. And this was a four ounce bat. So. Right. So you can get a whole project out of something, right. but yeah. Yeah. Into the world. They make really nice stuff. We'll link to them as well. Um, so yeah, after spinning class, which was all day on Thursday, that was a lot of fun. We met some cool people. Um, then it was set up day on Friday, and then the festival was all last weekend. Um, and it was crazy packed. The newspaper said 3,000 people. I think it must have been more than that. I heard 10,000 from somebody else who sounded, that sounded high to me. I'm guessing it was more like five or six, probably. probably the somewhere weekend. in the middle. Yeah. I think that was in large part to the fact that for a change, we had really nice weather. We did. It did not rain, which it almost always rains. Um, and we rolled out some new products. Um, you guys have heard me talk about these, but I got them all packaged thanks to mom's help here. So this is our solid lotion bar. And we also had lotion cream. Um, I'm not going to open this one, but it's for sale, but uh, different flavors. We also had a carrot. Um, there's the ingredients, which was very popular. I was surprised people were so into the carrot. Because um, mm -hmm. it seems to me to be a little bit of an unusual thing to put on your face, but it's really good on your skin. So um, if you did buy some, or if I gave you a free sample, please let us know how it's going with the creams. We'd love to get your feedback on that. Um, so yeah, lots of visitors on Saturday. And you went shopping. Yes, I did. <laughs> I did go shopping. As one does, right? Yes. I was going to go shopping for roving, but my friend Anne gave me, and there's more here on the table that you can't see, so I was all good for that. <laughs> well, over the years, we've met some really extraordinarily nice people who make fabulous products mm -hmm. at the Vermont Sheep and Wool Show, and one person who's there every year is a woman named Patricia Fortinsky. Mm -hmm. Her company is Tidal Yarns, and the sweater I'm wearing is made from Patricia's yarn. And she, New England, sources all of her wool, and it's all processed and spun at the Green Mountain Spinnery in Putney, Vermont. Mm -hmm. She hand dyes it. This particular yarn was dyed with madder and indigo. Mm -hmm. And I love it. It's mostly red, but it has a little bit of a purpley right undertone to it yeah. and she often over dyes light gray yarn mm -hmm. so she gets these ve very heathery slightly variegated yarns but it's a dream to knit with and she's one of those people that is the reason that people go to shows because she does not sell online and she does not sell in stores so if you want her products you have to go to a festival somewhere. Yeah, yeah. And I will link to her website as well. She does list her whole show schedule, and she does quite a few, I think seven or eight shows a season. She does. So. She does. And yeah. she's she's also on Instagram mm -hmm. and posts what she's up to in terms of new colors. She's dying and whatever. I really like her Instagram feed. So. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's amazing the way that natural dyes kind of all go together, no matter what shade they are. They're just right. kind of this beautiful, soft palette. And yeah, I love her yarns, too. Um, she's got some great, simple sweaters. Um, is this a Patricia's pattern? No, she has wonderful, simple patterns, okay. as Sarah just said. And she always has really great samples in her booth. Mm -hmm. So you can see what the yarn looks like when it's made into a garment. Mm -hmm. And try it on. This yeah. one, I believe, though, is a fiber trends pattern. Oh, but okay. But it's just yeah. a simple raglan sleeve 
It's like a jacket almost. Yeah. Yes. Really easy to knit, but a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And instant gratification with that yarn. It's almost an Aran weight right. yarn. So it's a quick knit. Yeah. So, and then you bought some other yarn, also not available online, but. Right. But maybe available on Inst if you ping him on Instagram. So this is from Michael Hampton. And I interviewed him a few uh, episodes ago. So you can go back and check out our <laughs> Barrel of Laughs interview. He's, he's funny. Um, but yeah, this is all that top that he um, has been dying. So he's been dying wool. Uh, wool top, it's called combed fiber, and then blending it and spinning it at his mill. <laughs> and these are beautiful colors. We'll get another shot too that I'll insert, but if you can see how they all go together. So, and what's your plan for this? I have been wanting to try a knitting technique called helix knitting. And it's a way to make garments with single color rows mm -hmm. using however many colors you want. You can do two or ten. It yeah. doesn't matter. But And no jogs, right? It's no like jogs. Seamless and as yeah. everybody as every knitter knows, because you're knitting in the round in a spiral, not really a circle, but a spiral, you get an offset of your rows that's very unattractive. Mm -hmm. And there are some techniques to minimize that jog, mm -hmm. but none of them hide it completely, I yeah. don't think. Yeah. And and I've tried several. But helix knitting, what you do is divide the number of stitches in your garment by the number of colors you have, mm -hmm. and you just knit a third of your stitches in one color, in this case, because they have three colors, and then a third of your stitches in the next color, mm -hmm. and then and you just keep going round and round. Yep. And you get perfect single color one row stripes. Mm -hmm. with, it just looks perfect. Yeah. Yep. There's a book out now. I want to say it's, ooh, she's from England. I'll have to link to it. I can't remember her name off the top of my head. But she just released a, books, a book on helical knitting. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So that's, that's. So my plan is to make. I've been trying to make more matching hats and cowls, mm -hmm. so I won't look like a mismatched bag lady when I go out in my hand knits. Yeah, and those are generous, uh, generous skeins. It's a big. I think the, this is a fabulous deal. M Michael is so meticulous, and this is three ply worsted weight yarn, 225 yards a skein, and he was selling this at the show for $15 a skein, which I think is a real bargain. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. Especially for this quality. Yes, so. exactly. And the colors are nicely blended together. So, as as you can see, you see, you can see a little variegation. I think this is probably the most variegated. But you're not going to get like a blob of a darker color because the wool's all blended in before it's spun. So all those variations are evenly blended throughout the throughout the yarn. That's lovely. And then you have a new hobby. <laughs> yes, I do. Um, I've been sitting in our booth for years, and in in my line of sight is a booth by some folks called The Spinning Studio. They're out of Bradford, Vermont, mm -hmm. and all over the walls of their booth, they have these beautiful tapestry that are needle felted, mm -hmm. and needle felting is something you can teach children to do. Yeah. And... So I finally scooted over there and bought myself this kit, and I'm probably going to cover up our faces holding this up That's to the okay. camera, Sorry. but there we are. Um, this is a little unicorn, and this is a really nice kit. It comes with everything you need, including the backing and a foam a square that you can use to do the felting on because mm -hmm. you're stabbing a very sharp needle through the fiber. And she also gave me a little tip and told me if you hold the pattern, if you tape uh, the backing felt to the window and tape the pattern over top of it, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, behind it, mm -hmm. <laughs> then it's very easy to trace the pattern onto the felt with a Sharpie. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so it's kind of like rug hooking in that way, right? You, you kind of draw out your pattern onto right. your backer and then you... Right. 
in this or case, applique app on top. But or no. tapestry weavers do that also. Oh, they, okay. they draw their design on their warp mm -hmm. before they start weaving, just so you'll have some guidelines to go by. Yeah. But this is so cool. I love their designs because they look like stained glass. I don't know if you guys can see up here, like this tree. It's just incredible. And like my mom says, they have they have some tapestries there that are probably four feet or larger on a dimension, you know, really big ones. But I think it's cool that they sell these smaller kits too. You right. Know, just try it out and see if you like it. Yeah. Fun. So that's something to do when we have the long hours of darkness in the wintertime. Yes. And it's very colorful. So it's, you know, right. a cheerful thing to look at. Very cool. Yeah. Color. You need some color. We're losing all of our, well, the trees are out right now. Um, but, you know, in about a week or two, we're going to be past peak color season. And then it's going to be what we call stick season, which is in between the fall color and when it starts to snow up here. So so what else do you have to show? Um, well, I uh, didn't really buy anything this year. I was very good. The booth was incredibly busy, so I didn't get out much. Um, sometimes I like to walk around and, and high five everybody. Um, but I did get to meet a few of you on Instagram, um, Instagram and YouTube subscribers. So hi, thanks for coming by. Um, and I made my annual pilgrimage over to Orange Cat Soap Works, um, who is just, she's like back to back with where we set up our tent. And, uh, she makes, she raises goats and she milks yes. them and she makes this lovely bar soap, um, up at Th Thistle Ridge Goat Dairy in Cornwall, Vermont. So Orange Cat Soap Works, you can find her on Facebook. Um, and she does wholesale as well if you're a store owner. She also uh, has an Etsy shop. She does? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I think that's new since the last time I looked. Um, but the goat's milk soap is really good for your complexion. It's very nice on your skin. And she does use um, perfume, but she doesn't overly scent her soaps. So I think they're strong enough that you can get whatever flavor they're supposed to be, but not so overpowering that you you know, sort of keel over when you smell it. I'm pretty smell sensitive. Um, this one's called Red Clover, and it just smells nice and fresh and floral. She has a bunch of different kinds. One thing I've been doing every year is buying several bars of her soap. And before I use the soap, I put it in my fiber stash. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the armoire where I keep my yarn and in the bins where I keep my spinning fibers. Mm -hmm. And it makes the, the wool acquire this wonderful scent. Mm -hmm. It yep. also keeps keeps the bugs away. So. Yeah. You, well, and you have a cedar chest where you keep your finished woolens. Yes. But I don't. Um, and so I put these, I do the same thing. I just rotate out last year's bars and put this year's bars in. And I put a couple in Rick's drawer and a couple in my drawer. And then I pull my sweater out and Rick goes, oh, what you smell nice. What do you smell like? And I go, it's just my sweater. <laughs> it's because it's picked up. Some of the scent from the soap, but that's nice. That's a good one. And then on Sunday, I also did a demonstration um, with this little gizmo, which is a Norwegian knitting thimble. Um, and I've had a lot of luck. Um, the these things that I designed. Um, I don't think I would have been able to successfully knit this without my knitting thimble. I've really come to rely on it. So it's just to manage uh, a way to manage a couple of yarns um, on one hand when you're knitting with multiple colors at the same time. And I found that as a continental knitter, it's it's very difficult for me to purl with my right hand. And I was having a lot of trouble with that. And so being able to hold both yarns on my left hand and purl in my usual style was very helpful. So I did a quick demo of that. There were probably, I don't know, 15 or so people that stopped by. And I'm thinking of offering it as a class at the next uh, Shape and Wool Festival, maybe a whole double knitting class. So we'll see how that goes. I think that's a great idea. It's a fascinating technique. Mm -hmm. But a little intimidating for some people. I think, I think and one took me a while to get the hang of it, you know, and find a method that worked for me. Um, I'd be curious if there's any English knitters out there that have used one of these. Um, I don't quite see how that's possible, but I would love to be wrong about that. So I'm just curious if you use one of these, leave a comment, let me know. 
um, yeah, so it was a great festival. Again, very busy, um, but we got out of there. I'd say we packed up within about 45 minutes on Sunday and came home and just sort of fell over. It's, um, it's a lot of fun, but as an introvert, it's hard. You know, you have to talk the whole time. And, right. <laughs> and all that I sort of get <laughs> to the point where my right. tongue's lolling out of my mouth and I can't think of anything else to say. So. It's a great way to network, though. And we, oh, al yeah. we always meet new people see old friends and as you mentioned earlier we met people that we've been following on instagram that we've never seen face to face and that was really fun yeah that was fun and we had a little uh, dress up we were in the vermont sheepskins booth and we had a little dress up with the uh, sheepskin shawls people were enjoying trying those on too they're fun yeah. pretend you're a viking or something mm -hmm. yeah so we'll look forward to uh to next year and hope that you all can uh, make it up to vermont uh one year um it's a great little festival. I think it's very accessible. It's not as crazy and crowded as some of your, you know, your Rhinebecks and your Maryland Sheep and Wolves. Um, but there's a lot of the same vendors and a lot of really good quality local products um, that you can't get anywhere else. Cool. Well, thank you all for joining us. And thanks, Mom, for coming on the show. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. Sure. We'll have you back. We'll, uh, we're going to do a Knitting with Mom segment or something. Okay. Yeah. Figure that out. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. So, uh, so enjoy your fiber, whatever you're working on for this fall, and we'll see you again next week. Cheers. Bye.